I was stationed out at Lake Mead National Recreation Area. I was in the desert. I thought it was the worst thing that ever happened to me. I wanted to leave. And that's when it happened. I noticed the change in me and how nature kind of transformed my life. I think my first real connection with nature as a kid was with a willow tree that we had in our front yard. It had long branches that blew in the wind. I spent hours climbing up into the different branches of that. When I saw the sequoias and the redwoods for the first time. And I was on a ship with other students from around the world watching icebergs float by. I was a canoe guide on the, in the south of France, paddling down these, you know, these big limestone gorges. When I first saw Yosemite, just being around these trees that have been there for so long. The first time that I went out in a triple kayak with someone who was a paraplegic. I, it was the first time that I can feel a tree, that I can touch a tree. I remember for us going on a snow trip, touching it, playing in it, rolling in it, feeling it. I still remember uh, the excitement in his face when we saw it, the first deer that I've ever seen. I felt like he was a kid because uh, I, I'd never seen my dad that way. And my mom is one of those people who stopped on the side of the road and said, look at the wildflowers. Going horseback riding with my grandfather. My father was a professor of entomology, uh, people who study insects. And well, while he was teaching, I was wandering off and, and looking at things. When I was a toddler during World War II, my great-grandfather would be out in the back. He had a, about a two-acre garden. A victory garden. My dad to put me on his lap. He was grafting trees, uh, citrus trees, and he said, you want to learn? I said, yeah. In front of my grandfather's house, there was a guava tree, and that guava tree was like amazing for me. There was a red fox den near our home, and I would go up in the evenings and watch. When I was really young, I would go with my setsune, which is Chippewan for grandma, and we would go cranberry picking, and she'd put me in the wheelbarrow, and she would pass them up to me in handfuls, and I'd just sit in the wheelbarrow and, and eat cranberries. Growing up in the Great Lakes, I vividly remember a sign down the beach with skull and crossbones, and it said, this lake is closed because it was polluted. Every summer for 12 years, I went camping with my family. Think about it, 1968 when we started, that was the height of the Civil Rights Movement. And uh, we integrated a lot of campgrounds, and I remember that. In the time when I was growing up in Peru, it was a very difficult time. There was a lot of internal warfare and, and civil guerrilla groups. But we had a house that um, neighboring was just rolling desert hills, and so my afternoons were spent just exploring many times on my own. I was born in the city of Nuremberg, and my parents and my sister and I, we used to do a lot of hiking. We went to the Bavarian Bohemian Forest. I grew up in India, and uh, in school we, we used to organize a lot of camping trips into the Himalayas, these gorgeous mountains which spread for miles and miles, and you have to see them to believe them. My parents used to take us as kids, along with the dog, to Point Pelee National Park. You know, there are actually cacti in that park. It was amazing to know that in Canada there are cacti. When I was five years old, I vividly remember my father, every Saturday, taking myself and my three-year-old brother to the Adirondacks. I remember the trees and the smells and standing in a river and just feeling enveloped by this water flowing downhill. Two summers ago, I traveled with my family to the Grand Canyon. It was so overwhelming that I almost had to learn to breathe again. My grandfather and uncle invited me to go on vacation with them and their family uh, to a lake in Maine. I fell in love with frogs, and I, each day I was out catching frogs and uh, sneaking them into my grandfather's suitcase. Okay, so that when I went home, back to Queens, I'd have my frogs with me. <laughs> the 
this summit is called Inspiring a New Generation. It really means inspiring all people to have a connection with and therefore a care for the earth. The summit is important because it's working to think of new ways that we can connect a new generation to nature. It's an opportunity for us to be innovative, creative. What we're looking for are new ideas. Ideas where we're crossing generations, bringing people together, we're crossing disciplines, we're crossing interests, we're crossing nations in this case. My name is Akima Price. I'm an independent consultant currently working with the DC Promise Neighborhood Initiative. My name is Dave Ford. I oversee a 4-H youth development program in Sussex County, New Jersey. I'm Chloe Dragonsmith, and I work with the Canadian Parks Council. Bill Hammond, I'm a Marist Professor at Florida Gulf Coast University. Gilder Ramirez, I am from the Golden Gate National Parks Conservancy in San Francisco. I'm Diane Wood, I'm the President of the National Environmental Education Foundation. My name is Dan Bisaccio, I work at a university in an urban setting. Sophia Saman, I retired from the U.S. Forest Service as a Director of Conservation Education Program. I'm Ernesto Enkerlin from Monterrey, Mexico. I work at uh, Tecnologico Monterrey. Michiko Martin, Director of Conservation Education for the U.S. Forest Service. My name is Henry Berger. My name is Krista Valentino, and I work with an initiative called Coalition Wild. James Bartram, I'm the Education Director for the Canadian Wildlife Federation. John Jarvis, and I'm the Director of the National Park Service in the United States. Jose Gonzalez, and I'm the founder of Latino Outdoors. Aloha, my name is June Chi. I'm a program manager for Kupu, a conservation nonprofit in Hawaii. My name is Archie. I rep I'm here representing the IUCN, International Uni Union for Conservation of Nature. My name is Brad Smith, and I'm the Chairman of the Fish and Wildlife Commission for the state of Washington. Peace, love, and justice. My name is Tim Blessed. I'm a hip hop artist out of New Bedford, Mass. Massachusetts. I'm Alan Naturel, former Chief Executive Officer of Parks Canada. Claire Watson, I'm from Toronto, Canada, and I have my own website called youthup.ca. I am Mukhtar Mohammadi. I'm from Afghanistan since I came in the United States and I started working with the Onondaga Air Corps. My name is Daniela Benavides and I'm here from Peru. I'm Karen Keenleyside. I work with Parks Canada. My name is Laís. I'm from Brazil. Chandra Taylor-Smith. I am the Vice President for Community Conservation Education at the National Audubon Society. Liz Stuckey sundy Founding Director and Creative Consultant for Music to Life. We design music-based programs, initiatives, campaigns. Deirdre Crowley. We run interactive meetings using visual tools to support collaborative engagement and problem solving. I'm Cheryl Charles. I was one of the founders of the Children and Nature Network. I'm Keith Wheeler and I'm the president of the Brandwine Institute. And the Brandwine Institute's focused on getting people to connect and love nature to make the world a better place. It's kind of an experiment when you bring all these different people together. Uh, who are, are very involved and very committed and doing different things uh, for a conference like this because they start to share information and that triggers other ideas and relationships that sort of spill out after the conference so that you start to see different things evolve from the conference, uh, a lot of which you could never have anticipated. This summit is going to allow me to have a voice, especially as a young person, to collaborate and participate in conversation. And I really appreciate that opportunity and I hope that I can help pave the way for other youth to do the same. I, I'm very hopeful for the future. I think that being here and, and being around all these amazing minds and seeing how much passion that people have for this work. I'm excited about the solutions that the new generation is bringing in. This summit is really helping to build the, the heart, the energy, the commitment for voices throughout the world to open the door and get kids and families and whole communities outdoors in nature. That's the mission that I'm on. So I made that connection that I am the bee. Pollinate truth if you choose to see. Pollinate the youth to truly be free. Pollinate love, let's all agree. I am the bee. So keystone species, we need these bees, honey. They pollinate most of the things you eat, funny. They do this for free, without a fee. Billions in produce produced nationally. Now millions of bees have abandoned their hives. If they disappear in four years, human race will die. That's a quote from the famous scientist Einstein. It's logical to anyone with half a mind, man. It's horrible. Where you think you're gonna run and hide? It's possible for us to combine and stop these lives. Respect all lives, wherever it resides. Whether plant, algae, bacteria, or fungi, that's right. It's time for us to vocalize. Cause if the bees die, then we too die. That's right. It's time for us to strategize. Cause if the bees die, then we too die. I am the bee. 
Pollinate truth if you choose to see. Pollinate the youth to truly be free. Pollinate love, let's all agree. I am the bee. Say, I am the bee. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Stop watching the screen and go outside. <laughs>